Hi, my name is Robin Burton and I've been an AC rep on and off for about 20 years now. And I've also been active in uh, several other standards organizations. Over the years, one thing that I've seen many struggle to grasp and that in fact I struggled to understand the consequences of myself at first is that the web isn't defined by a list of technologies like HTTP or HTML. You can use tech designed for the web in non-web contexts, for instance, app web views, and you can use tech uh, designed outside the web on the web, like PDF. In fact, uh, three decades in, we still don't have a crisp definition of what the web is. One way to look at it is that the web is the digital infrastructure for human knowledge and interactions designed and governed to benefit people and to protect them against excessive concentrations of power. That's a bit of a mouthful. We don't need to dig into all of it, but let's look at what is important for an AC rep to understand here. The first thing to note is that the web is opinionated. It has values. For instance, it puts humans at the center. As technologists, we often prefer to avoid discussing values, and that might be fine for smaller and simpler projects, but they are important here for several reasons. First, values are required for good governance. Simple problems have purely technical solutions, but hard problems require us to make trade-offs. Referencing values is how we resolve difficult trade-offs and find consensus, no matter how hard the problem. Second, these values give the system coherence. The web is extraordinarily complicated and even just the work of the W3C covers massive ground. The only way that we can get these disparate parts to work together is by having common objectives, which is to say common values. Governance and coherence have worked together to grant the web amazing staying power. One consequence of having explicit values, which we are doing a better job of documenting now, is that we don't pretend to be neutral. No technology is ever neutral. It only feels that way when we don't look too closely at which values are involved. Not pretending that technology is neutral means that we can actively work to find problems early. It doesn't mean that we stop all issues before they happen, but we get things to a better place for the people who use the web. Now, this might sound like a boatload of philosophy, but on a daily basis, it translates into very pragmatic operational work. For instance, we only add a feature when the platform is trustworthy enough to support it. This way, we can deliver a trustworthy experience that frees people to connect to any site on the web. This is key to the web's success. To make this work, we need guarantees that by default, a web experience is safe, private, internationalized, accessible, fast, and capture resistant. The result is, of course, always far from perfect, but we can keep improving it. These requirements constantly guide the work of groups to make sure that the web works for everyone. That is why the W3C cares so much about wide review and why we insist so keenly on horizontal review for accessibility, security, privacy, etc. The review process makes each specification better. More importantly, it is key to interoperability between implementations of a standard and between different standards in the platform. It brings quality and coherence to our work. It's how the whole thing fits together. And that's where you can help as an AC rep. Maybe this feels like a lot, and maybe you only wish to care about a much smaller corner of the web. And that's perfectly fine. That's what most of us are here for. But it's important to understand the broader context in which that work fits and the kind of review that it will be put through. As an AC rep, you will be exposed to this broader context more clearly than many participants. It's worth taking some time to familiarize yourself with our architectural principles and our review expectations.
I hope that this short presentation has given you the background you need to navigate the review process and to understand the context for the conversations you join. I thank you very much for your time and, and attention, and please don't hesitate to contact me with questions if you have any.